I would like to share with you, and then we're going to respond to this message. The title of my message is Forgiving Others and Yourself. Forgiving Others and Yourself. The Bible says in Romans, if you can open up with me, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says this, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And you've heard that verse a lot in your life, and I've heard this verse a lot in my life. And we tend to think that the best moments of our life work for the best and for good. And often, whenever when we go through trouble, whenever when we go through moments in life where it's painful, we tend to not embrace this verse because we are in shock to say, God, you mean this is going to work for good? It says, yeah, but if you love the Lord and if you're called according to his purpose, God is going to use every circumstance from your life and my life for good and for his glory and for his purpose. There are things in my life that times like, did I really have to go through that? Why did that happen? That was so mature. Why did I do that? Or why did I do that? And as painful or as regretful memories sometimes that we might have about our life, when I look back now, I say, God, it's because of your mercy. You have led me through everything. You have shown yourself to be still strong, still merciful, still kind, still loving. And because of all the circumstances, you were with me now I have a better understanding of who you are, of your love and your mercy. But you see, a lot of times in our life, we deal with things that are personal, and we deal with friendships, we deal our, with our family members, we deal with parents and children. And often, if problems are not resolved, they are they are building inside of our heart like a mountain, and that mountain ultimately separates and brings division in friendships, in family, in communities. And ultimately, the core of everything is unforgiveness. It's the lack of love, the lack of the ability to cover the multitude of sin. It's the lack that we don't have on our own to say, I'm going to cover my brother, I'm going to cover my sister, I'm going to cover my family by the grace of God. And because sometimes we're lacking that, it leads us to a place where we feel like we're going to be holding a grudge against somebody for a long time. And it comes a moment in our life that we want freedom from that. Don't get me wrong, it's not like we're looking forward to that, but sometimes we feel pity about ourselves. And that pettiness about ourselves leads us to a place for me and for you to be in a danger zone. In a danger zone. Sometimes if you work in a shop or you work with different tools, it's written danger zone. If you're not ready to go there, do not go there because an accident might happen. But what happens because of our ignorance, sometimes we would do things and it can even happen or end up in death. Same thing with unforgiveness that is not taken care of. With problems that we allow in our lives to add up that are not taken care of. It can lead us into a danger zone that ultimately the goal of this route is to destroy us. You might say, how do I know if I have unforgiveness or if somebody bothers me or if I can't if I can't live my life just loving everybody? Well, one of the things is that put yourself in a place that if those people would walk in the room where you are, is anything going to change in your conversation, in your thoughts, in your memory, in your manners? If whoever is going to come in the room, and all of a sudden you kind of like, you know, what's going on here? That means something is not right. Me and you need to pray about that. If the atmosphere is changed because of the presence of a person, me and you need to pray for that. Because that's where it all begins. 
And it starts a lot of times also with suspicion. Say with me, suspicion. I suspected this way or that way. Trust me. I've been through so many things in my life that I suspected. And at the end of the day, they were just dumb. They were not real. But because I suspected, I built a story already. And that story affected my attitude and affected my life and my response to the people that I love. It's because of the suspicion that was in my mind. The story that I would like to read with you, it's written in Genesis chapter 45, verse 1 and down. But before we read this scripture, I think out of all of us in this room, I can relate the best to this story. Because my parents, they had 13 children, 12 boys, and one girl in our family. And Jacob had 12 boys and one girl. The only difference between my dad and mom and Jacob, Jacob had it from multiple wives. My mom and dad only had from them. That's my dad. My dad used to say this. Okay, so I, I just borrowed from him. He says, the difference is, it's just me and my wife. We had 13. Jacob, another story. But nevertheless, there were 12 boys and one girl. And as you know, that it, it, it's, if you have three children, sometimes things can happen. And you, you're running around. You're like, what is going on in this family? 13? Can you imagine asking forgiveness? We were growing up and we always got in, I mean, 12 boys, come on, right? And I remember, we always had to ask forgiveness. And we can't say, I'm sorry. We had to say, forgive me. I'm sorry was not enough. That was not even our, our vocabulary. Forgive me. And we would look down, forgive me. My parents were like, no, 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 you look in the eyes. <laughs> so you look in the eyes and say, forgive me, forgive me. And then you gave a hug. And then we pray. It always was like that. We ask forgiveness, we have to look at each other, we give a hug, we reconcile, and then we pray. And that's something that, that stands with me to this day, and I am actually encouraging my kids to do the same. My kids to do the same. There's so much power to say, forgive me, forgive me. Sometimes we think it's something very, very below me, it's embarrassing. No, when we say that, we're actually exhibiting strength. We're exhibiting maturity. We're exhibiting that we are mature believers, that we understand what it means to ask forgiveness and to forgive. And now, as we know in this family, there was a lot of turmoil, envy, strife, pride. All of the things that you can imagine that are going on sometimes in our life, everything was happening in this family. And the brothers decided to hate Joseph because he had a dream. And because he shared the dream, the brothers became so angry with him that they, became to a, they came to a place to fake a killing spree, so to speak, to sell Joseph, but they originally wanted to kill him and then come to his father to say, listen, this is the clothes that you had given him with many colors. Now it's full of blood. An animal attacked him, and Joseph is no longer with us. Can you imagine for about 20 years, they're living in this, in this mindset. Joseph is gone. The father is living in this mindset. The animals killed him. They devoured him. But of course, Joseph's brothers, they knew what they did. Living for about 20 years with a secret in their life. Living every day, gathering together, as I mentioned, and they're just the boys at the table, and they're talking, listen, maybe we should have done that, we should have done that. Then the father walks into the home, and he comes to the table, and all of a sudden, the conversation changes. Remember what I said, that a presence comes into the room, and all of a sudden, everything changes? What can be in your life, in my life, that whatever what we do, somebody walks in, and all of a sudden... Our story changes, our, our emotions change, everything changes because of something that we're hiding in our lives, in our heart. Something that it's so long has been there that we become so, so numb to it, but at the same time, it's so real to us. Think about the process. What were these brothers going through? Wondering. Because they knew he never 
He never died by their hands. They sold him. And he ultimately became a slave in Egypt. They never knew the story of their brother, what happened with him. And they were wondering what happened with Joseph. Did, is he still alive? Did, did he die already? What is going on with him? And this is the thoughts that were tormenting them each day. Doing something like that, I believe that each day would go by. And it was right in front of their memories. And now it comes a moment where God allows famine to come into the land. You see? You can say, famine, why? People are dying, animals are dying. Why? God works all things together for good. Can it be that famine was part of the reason to reconcile this family? And now they're coming to seek bread. And the story you know that first time, second time, Joseph does not reveal himself to his brothers. But it comes a moment now where they have to face this reality that has been in their hearts. Joseph knew his brothers. He, he recognized them the moment he came in front of them, but his brothers did not recognize Joseph. And think about those moments. It was not like one day and that's it. It was a period of time that they came, they left, they came again, they left, and then they came. And through all of this season, Joseph had every opportunity for revenge. All of this season, Joseph could have made a plan how to kill them, how to bring revenge, how to meet them on a road where they were going. But through all of this season, Joseph chose to go another route. And now we're going to read together. Genesis 45, verse 1 and down. Then Joseph could not control himself. A different translation says, could not refrain himself, could not hold back himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, make everyone go out from me. He was talking to all the soldiers and all the people that were there from Egypt. So no one stayed with him, with Joseph, made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Can you imagine? It was a moment of 20 years of confusion, of pain, of things that Joseph was holding in his heart. There came a moment that Joseph began to weep. So hard that it says the Pharaoh and other people heard it. In different words, Joseph could not contain anymore. In one sense, the pain, but in the different sense, the forgiveness that he had for his brothers. And often in our life that we go through different seasons, we can come to a point where we can cry out to the Lord and let it go. Whatever what oppresses us, whatever what we're trying to hold in our lives and in our hearts, whatever secrets that are there, it's very healthy for me and for you to cry out and to let it go. Seek a brother, seek a sister. It's the body of Jesus Christ. We're all together in this. Open up about the things that you're going through. Don't contain them and let it go and give a cry out. And this is what Joseph did. He cried out and he wept aloud. So the Egyptians heard it and the house of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, and out of all the things, Joseph is opening his mouth. And now he's saying, I am Joseph. And the next very thing he says, is my father still alive? He had every opportunity to say, I am Joseph. Now the doors are locked. I'm going to bring revenge against you. But no, he is full of grace and full of mercy. And he is in a position to forgive. You see, he's not even seeking for them to ask forgiveness. His brothers never had the opportunity to come and say, forgive me, Joseph, for what I have done. But because of Joseph and the things he went through in life, he was already prepared by God himself through prison, through hardships, through famine, through everything he went through. He already went through a position to say, God, because of your love and mercy, I'm choosing to forgive. This is the part that I want to talk to you. That you forgive despite if anybody asks you for forgiveness. You don't hold a grunge and say, I'm going to hold it till you're going to come and bow down before me and ask me for forgiveness. No, we as mature believers are 
an advantage to have advantage over circumstances and situations to say, I'm going to forgive you, even if you don't ask me for forgiveness. And this is what Joseph says, but his brothers could not answer him. For they were dismayed at his presence. Another transition says, they were afraid. They froze. They became numb in front of Joseph. Is this the response that we're going to get from doing so much evil to you? Now you're coming and revealing yourself by weeping and crying out, letting it go. And to say, I cannot contain this forgiveness in my life anymore. But I'm going to let you know that I'm covering you with the forgiveness of God. And this is ultimately what Joseph was saying. He was not going back to all of the drama. He was not going back to the story, how he happened, who pushed him, who pulled him out. He did not go there. But he just revealed himself to them. And then Joseph said to his brothers, come near me. Come near me. He talks about I'm no longer a threat to you. Let me take a step further. He was never a threat to them. And so often in our life, we think that people can be a threat to us. And that's why we allow things to come into our lives that will build walls of division. It all becomes about that. It's a threat. And all of a sudden, we are living in a world that everything is about domination. What about serving? That's what the life of Jesus was about. And Joseph said to his brothers, come near me, please. And they came near and he says, I'm your brother Joseph, whom you sold to Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves. Are you kidding me? Every reason they had to be angry with themselves. He says, no, do not be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. Now, this is the scripture that all things work together for good. Even the evil things, even the bad things, even the sinful things, even everything. Whenever when we come to the Lord and we love him because he loved us first. And this is the scripture now. He continues, for God sent me before you to preserve life. In different words, God has orchestrated all of these things in our life to preserve your family, to preserve life. It's an amazing thing when me and you choose to live in the power of forgiveness. All of a sudden, we see the story, not to be a victim, but to be victorious. No longer me and you are victims, but we become victorious through Christ Jesus. We don't see every circumstance and every situation and everything that people might do to us as we are victims. But we see, God, you will allow me to go through all of these things, and I'm going to come victorious. So now others can be blessed. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for, your, for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. Oh, my brother, my sister, if only we can grasp on this power power to live in forgiveness every circumstance in our life we will see through forgiveness we will see through the banner of forgiveness that Jesus Christ showed it to us and now we're extending to others and when we see that then we will be able to say that all things work together for good I might not understand it I got hurt I got in prison I got unjustly accused whatever what it is but God, I choose to not hold anything against others. And because of that, me and you will see the hand of God leading us through every circumstance. And to a place and to a point where you will be a blessing even to your enemy. Even to those that hurt you. Even to those that abused you. Even to those that wronged you. And this is what he said. That God did all of these things. He has made me a father. To, he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry 
You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children, and your children's children, and your flock, and your herds, and all that you have, there I will provide for you. I will provide for you. This is a place that I want to always live in. In a place of forgiveness. In a place of forgiving even if there has not been extended to me an apology. In a place where I can cover somebody despite of what they have done. Oh, Pavel, you have no idea what they have done. I don't. Am I never? No. But God knows. God knows and he can give me and you the strength to overcome. Be in a position to forgive others. Be in a place to forgive others, to be quick to forgive others without expecting an apology. And whenever, when we live like that, our testimony will be like Joseph's. That all of the things that you have done, oh, even though you did it, but I see the hand of God in all of this. Because I became stronger. I, through the circumstances, I'm closer to the Lord. I've experienced his love. I was in prison, but I was not alone because God was with me. Do you understand that? Can you imagine if Joseph got a hold of bitterness and got a hold of the, of the things that were so wrongly done to him and he lived there? But he chose to live in forgiveness. And because of that, the presence of his brothers did not bother him. But even more, he wanted to shout and cry out to say, I am, I am Joseph. I am that one that chose to live in forgiveness. I am that one that providing you food right now when, it's, when there is a famine. I am the one that got it transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit. I am that person that you have sold. But listen, I'm not here to bring revenge, but I'm here to feed you. I'm here to give you bread. I'm here to feed you. Isn't it an amazing story? Isn't it an amazing journey? Isn't it an amazing place to be in? And this is what the Bible says in the New Testament. Jesus himself says, if your enemy is hungry, what do you say? Keep them in that place till they die out of hunger? No, he says, you give them food. You give them food. Are there people in our lives right now that we consider them to be enemies because of what they have done to us? And instead of offering them food like Joseph offered to his brothers, we're offering them mean text messages, cold shoulder, avoiding them. Not being in the same room, keeping a distance. What are those things? My brother, my sister, I want all of our testimonies to be that I chose to live in the power of forgiveness. Despite, say with me, despite. Despite them asking me to forgive. Despite that. Why? Because this is where life is. This is where we will grow. And there we will have the ability to feed our enemies when they're hungry, to clothe them when they're naked, to help them when they're in need. Because it's not about our emotions, but it's about the principles of the kingdom of God. It's the principles of the kingdom of God. And in my closing, now I would like to talk to you about forgiving myself. Say with me, forgiving myself. I tend to to think, and this is just my opinion, you can leave it or take it. I tend to think that sometimes in our life, forgiving others might be a little bit easier than forgiving ourselves. Forgiving others, it's something that has been done to you. And many times we can go through a journey, we can get counseling, we can get help, and we can get to a place where we can forgive the, the others. Especially if it's unjustly, sometimes we can cover them. But now I want to talk to you about the harder part where I think it's a little bit harder to forgive ourselves. Because we as people, we tend to beat ourselves down so badly. We tend to go through a season and, and say, I can't believe I did that. And if the enemy can get us into a place like that, he imprisons us through our thinking. 
No longer we walk in the victory of the cross. No longer we're walking through the power of the cross and what was offered to us through the blood that we are new creation in him. But we are pity over ourselves. And more than that, we live in regret. Say with me, regret. We live in regret. How do I know this? Well, let's look at the story of Joseph and his brothers again. Now, whenever, when Jacob is passing away. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 and down says this. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said. You see, it doesn't say that Joseph's father Jacob told them. It says that whenever when the father passed away, they said among themselves. And they came up with a plot. That's what they said. It may be that Joseph will hate you, would hate us, and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a messenger to Joseph saying, your father gave his command before he died. You see, there is nowhere in the scriptures that his father gave a command or such a command. There's nowhere in the scripture that we find that. But they came with that plot because they were fearful and because they were not able to forgive themselves. It's amazing what stories we can come up with in our life whenever when we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. Verse 17. Say to Joseph, please forgive them. Forget the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgressions of the servants of the God, your father. You would think that Joseph probably was like, man, finally, Jacob is gone. Our father is gone. I have every opportunity. But Joseph began to weep again. Why? I began to think, why are you weeping, Joseph? Because I think he came to a place in his life to understand that his brothers never understood and received the power of forgiveness. They never understood the depth of forgiveness. They still lived in a place, an eye for an eye, a punch for a punch. And also Joseph understood that they lived in a place that they did not forgive themselves for the things they have done. And he said, Joseph wept when, he, when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, you see, they're, they're again continuing with this. He says, behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, do not fear. See, again, do not fear. For am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear again. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This story transformed my life. Because it says that they were afraid. It says that they were in a place of Joseph is going to punish us. Joseph is going to turn against us. And he says, no. Am I in the place of God? No, even whatever what you did, it's covered. I forgive you. And I'm weeping because for some reason we're coming back to this place where we're already covered. We're already passed. And we already went on. And we're coming back to that place. My brother, my sister, is there things in your life that you're coming before the Lord again and again and you're weeping. You find yourself weeping over the things that God already says, I forgave you and I covered you. And we're coming again to those places. It's not because we're seeking forgiveness, but because we cannot forgive ourselves. Because we live in a place of regret and we, because we live in a place of hurt. Because we live in a place, I'm a loser. I can't do anything. This is haunting me. God wants to give you freedom today. He wants to give you freedom today. And that's why he's saying, I'm not God. My responsibility is to forgive and cover you with forgiveness. But let me take it further. Now, if we choose not to forgive and live in forgiveness and forgive ourselves, 
among us, that attitude will be turned towards the Lord. And every time we come in his presence, we will feel like we don't belong there. And that's the plan of the enemy. Can you imagine Joseph's brothers, they were at the table with Joseph. He was high up in our, that, that was like a privilege for, for them to be at the table. It's a picture of Christ and us. It's a privilege for all of us to be at the table with the Lord to partake. But can you imagine Joseph every time he's at the table, he's enjoying his time. But secretly his brothers are thinking, oh, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time because he's going to revenge. He's going to bring revenge against me. And Joseph is crying out again. He says, no, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to be a blessing. I'm not in a place to bring revenge, but I'm in a place to be a blessing. Why did they do all of these things? Because they were fearful. You see, in our life, through everything that we might went through, fear cripples in. And now we deserve the punishment. Say deserve. But because of the grace of God, the punishment has been removed. But sometimes because we do not understand the grace of God, we are still living in a place of fear that understanding that the punishment is going to come against me. And we have a hard time to forgive ourselves. Let me take it further. Sometimes we take this as a punishment because we feel pity about ourselves. Instead of forgiving ourselves and moving on. We, we think that it pleases the Lord for us to live in that state of remorse. And always living in the place of regret. But what's going to happen? Fear is going to cripple in. And fear is something that will destroy us. But that's why the Bible says that Jesus, <laughs> the power of love. He says the perfect love of Jesus Christ casts out fear. And later on he says why? Because fear has to do with, say it one more time. Fear has to do with punishment. And this is what was the broader state. This is where they were living in fear because they we're waiting for punishment. But the love of Jesus Christ pushes out fear. Because whenever when we live in fear of regret and unforgiveness towards others and unforgiveness towards us, we will live in a place where we're going to expect punishment. But the love of Jesus Christ is speaking to me and to you this morning that He desires for us to be baptized in love. To be baptized in love. In the love of Jesus Christ. And when we're going to be baptized in his love, the Bible says that the love of Jesus Christ will push away, will cast away the fear because fear has to do with punishment. But the punishment was taken on the cross more than 2,000 years ago upon the child, the son of Jesus Christ, the son of God, Jesus Christ. The punishment was put upon him. So now me and you no longer have to live in fear of punishment, but accept the grace and the forgiveness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to enjoy our Christian walk. To enjoy our Christian walk. Amen. Live like Joseph lived in a place of forgiveness. To forgive regardless if they asked you to forgive them. And if you live there that way, you will be in a place of riches that you'll be able to feed others. Why? Because where there is bitterness and unforgiveness, God does not bless. God does not bless. But whenever when we live in that state like Joseph, God will bless. will give you resources that you will be able to bless others and feed others. And the second thing, if you find yourself in the category like Joseph's brothers, that you live in a place that you cannot forgive yourself, the forgiveness is extended, but you always think, man, am I going to be punished? What is the result of all the things? You might have results on this earth because of the laws, but in the kingdom of God, you can be covered by His grace, by His mercy. And today you can say, fear, get out. I receive the love of Jesus Christ because I'm no longer going to live in a place of fear, expecting punishment. But I'm going to live and embrace the love of Jesus Christ that casts out fear that the punishment was poured upon his son. So now me and you can live in this forgiveness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God.
Let's stand. If this message spoke to you, one, you can't forgive. Come, we're going to pray together. You must forgive. For your sake, you must forgive. Say with me, must. You must forgive. For the sake of our family. For the sake of your marriage. For the sake of your children. You must forgive. Must forgive. If you live in a place of regret, painful of the things you have done, the sin that you have done, the wrong things you have done, and you, you're, you're putting a smile on your face, but deep inside you're hurting. Because fear is crippling in that you're not accepted by God no longer. The punishment is going to come your way. Receive today the good news that the punishment was poured upon Jesus Christ on the cross. They will cast out, his love will cast out every fear that you can live in freedom. And if this is you, come quickly. Come quickly. I would like to pray. Come. If this is you, just, just come. Don't wait for a song. Come right now. If you fall into this category, this is a serious thing. It's life and death. Don't live in bitterness. Don't live in unforgiveness towards your children, towards marriage, towards your spouse, towards your friends. Don't live in that place. Unforgiveness will, will put you in prison. But the love of Jesus Christ offers us forgiveness and casts out every fear that is out there. Come, join me here. And we're going to be praying in a moment after this song.